It's all decked out in its holiday best. Apparently, first dog Bo is everywhere. There are 40 Bo ornaments and cutouts of the Portuguese water dog around the White House. Bo gave them all a final inspection. How cute is Bo just wandering the halls? Joining us now is Jennifer Boswell Pickens. She's a White House social expert and author of the book Christmas at the White House. It focuses on the crucial role many pets had on humanizing and softening political figures. Jennifer, great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I love this time of the year. There's a lot of preparation that goes on, but especially decorating the White House. When does all the planning start? Absolutely. Well, the plating really starts sometimes even as early as now. Um, all of the first ladies will pretty much tell you the same thing. Shortly after the inauguration, they have this wonderful meeting with the White House Chief Flores, the White House Usher, the First Lady's Chief of Staff, and they're always so surprised when basically the first of February, their first year in office, mm -hmm. they'll say, what would you like the Christmas theme to be? <laughs> so really, by the time the Easter egg roll is um, packed up, everything is on order and has gone firm. So, you know, Mrs. Obama might actually be somewhat thinking what she might want to do next year right now. Oh my gosh, if you think you're busy at home, think about Michelle Obama. Right. So is it really exactly. up, Jennifer, to the First Lady to kind of pick the theme and decide how she would like it to feel inside the White House? Oh, absolutely. It is 100 um, percent her decision and how she'd like it to look. And every First Lady really has had a unique impact um, with the theme. They've even kind of used it sometime as a political tool. Mm -hmm. I often think of, you know, First Lady Barbara Bush and her first Christmas theme had a literary theme. And when you think about Barbara Bush, you think about her campaign to, um, mm -hmm. to make all Americans more literate. Um, and a lot of First Ladies has used that as a tool to sort of highlight a political issue they might have. Which I love. They're picking a theme in that direction. Let's talk about the Christmas trees. Um, when did the big trees start arriving at the White House? I remember we covered this when the tree was arriving there. It certainly is beautiful. Oh, absolutely. The Christmas tree arrives the day after Thanksgiving, so that first Friday. And it has a wonderful, much-loved tradition. First Lady Burr Johnson actually is the one that helped start the tradition of how they select a Christmas tree. Before, um, when it had been the Kennedys or anyone prior before that first family, it was often just a friend or a family member that might know of a tree to be big enough. Mm -hmm. But um, Mrs. Johnson, with the help of the National Christmas Tree Association, actually start held a, state, a nationwide contest. Each winner of each state will then enter, and you have a national winner that presents that singular tree. And it is a beautiful tree. It has to be at least 18 and a half feet tall. Mm -hmm. um, it takes 12 to 20 years to grow that tree. It's beautiful. It has a richly um, stately shape and color, and it holds between 4,500 to 8,000 lights on that one singular tree. <laughs> uh, they have to build a custom stand to hold it that ha holds 15 gallons of water to keep that tree fresh this season. I can't imagine so, if and one light goes out trying to figure out which oh, light I, it is with thousands exactly. of them to choose from. Let's talk exactly. Jennifer, about gingerbread houses. We've seen quite a few of them. Uh, which administration started that tradition? That is the Nixon administration. First Lady Patricia Nixon with Hans Roffert, the executive chef there, um, started that wonderful, much-loved tradition of the annual gingerbread house. It was instantly a hit when she was First Lady. It actually became so popular, it required a Marine guard to stand near the gingerbread house because often during the you know thousands of people that come through, they'd want to start picking off pieces. And it has grown every year. Um, First Lady Nancy Reagan wanted to make it a little bit more personable, so they added jelly beans as a nod to the president's favorite candy. They also started to include First Dog Rex there um, mm -hmm. on the gingerbread house. Then First Lady Barbara Bush is actually the one that saved the tradition of the gingerbread house. When Hans Roffert retired, mm -hmm. Roland Mesnier loved her, but he was... Um, you know, had been working for Hans Roffert for many years, and he sort of didn't want to step on his toes after his retirement. But they came up with a great solution that, you know, he would make it his own gingerbread house. So wow. that's when you really see it starting to make the mark and grow and become so wonderful and so popular. And um, it just mm -hmm. kept continuing to grow during the Clinton administration. And then First Lady Laura Bush is the one that requested it always be a replica of the White House, and it has ever since. 2001. Right. Jennifer, it is fascinating and beautiful how they decorate no matter what administration. Your book is called Christmas at the White House. Thanks for your time. Thank you.